Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another recommendations video. Don't mind the noises you hear outside. The trash person just decided to come by as soon as I hit record. Isn't that fun? Okay, well, the inspiration for today's video is that I've been reading some pretty dark books lately and well, I am not saying that I didn't enjoy them, a lot of them have been five stars. It hasn't been the greatest for my mental health just because of being isolated and being at home and you know those dark thoughts start to spiral a little bit and just not be the healthiest things to do. So my next couple of videos I want to do are going to be a little bit lighter just because I've been in the mood to read some lighter books and I was looking back over some of my favorites from the past of ones that I could suggest to you and so this video as you can tell is gonna be my favorite YA books so none of these are actually super new this is gonna be a bit of a throwback recommendation because I haven't been reading a lot of YA lately and the only YA I have read has been continuing of series so I just went to my bookshelf and I was like you know what I haven't made a YA book recommendation since I've had this many this many subscribers um, and so I thought that could be fun I know most of you are here for romance but it's okay to try something else out once in a while right so let's go ahead and dive into so I'm just gonna go right in a lot of these do have romance in them too as well the ones that don't I'll let you know um, but because I like romance in my books no matter what age level they are you're going to see that so the first one I'm gonna start off with is one that I read back in high school and I used to love this author back then so this is Megan Mead's guide to the McGowan boys by Kate Bryan so it's gonna be shiny so I'll show you this and then I'll talk about it. So Megan, her family is her. It's just her and her parents. And her parents, her dad is getting sent um, to Korea for uh, for a tour of duty because her parents are still active military. And she is kind of drawing the line. She asks if she can stay and finish high school and not have to move across the world for her dad's job anymore. And so her parents not having any family that they can send her to they send her to a family friend which is the McGowan's and they have seven sons they have seven sons ranging from the age of like I think the youngest one is like eight all the way up to 20 years old and there is this book is a comedy it's really funny there's one boy that she one of the McGowan's that she seriously has a crush on there's one of them that already has a girlfriend there's one of them who is really quiet and shy and has a crush on her and then there's some that are kind of terrorizing her so it's this lone girl moving into a home with seven guys look at how like early 2000s this is like based on like the clothing that the guys are wearing it just is so funny but anyway this one is super cute if you're looking for a bit of a lighter fare if you don't mind reading YA I think this could be a really fun one for you and I really liked a lot of Kate Bryan's writing when I was younger um, to be fair I haven't revisited this book in a little while but like I said I'm hoping to since I'm going to be trying to read some lighter books coming up then I have one that this isn't technically categorized as YA but after having read the entire series I feel like it fits into the YA new adult area um, there isn't a ton about it that would make it even new adult in my opinion um, and that is the steel and fire series this is book one duel of fire by Jordan Rivet. I used to talk about this book all the time on my channel like all the time especially when I was reading fantasy constantly um, this book is about Dara Ruminor and she is a duelist so she has trained a lot of her life to fight with swords um, and her family isn't too happy about that because they are they are fire wielders and she doesn't seem to have the ability to do that and so her parents are you know always having her work in their shop and she just wants to be she wants to get a sponsor and be a championship dueler well her parents don't want to pay for that so to help her get better and to help her be able to train at the level she wants her coach sets her up with the crown prince whose name is Siv um, I think Severian is how you say his name it's been a little while um, but 
he starts out, you think he's going to be kind of cocky and like, it's going to be like a hate to love, but it, it doesn't even like go there because as soon as they have their first duel, which he's very good at dueling as well, but his coach doesn't think that he's trying hard enough. So that's why their coach pairs them up with each other. And as well as the coach like trusts Dara to be paired with the crown prince because, you know, that could be a dangerous position for anyone um and he immediately is like wow you're really good teach me what you know i would love to be your dueling partner so that's something that i love so much about sim and dara's relationship is dara is pretty reserved um she's a little bit shy and then she just gets like whipped up into the world of the prince and the prince has two sisters and the two sisters just like totally fall for dara as well and they want to help her get a sponsor so she can be really successful um, obviously there's a little bit of chemistry between Dara and Siv, but he is going to need to have an arranged marriage and his family, there is a rebellion kind of brewing. And so he needs to do his duty and make sure that his family is as secure as possible. Um, but so there isn't much romance at all that happens in the first book, but this is a five book series. Um, these are self-published books. I believe they are all on Kindle Unlimited or they were really cheap. I can't remember. I bought all the physical because I wanted to support um, Jordan Rivet that way. And I loved this series. It was amazing. So then I got to talk about a Sarah Dessen. I've mentioned her before on my channel, but she still is my favorite contemporary YA author. I've read all of her books except the newest one, which I'm hoping to do soon since I'm trying to be in the mood, like I said, to read um, YA again. Um, but this one, all of these books usually deal with a hard hitting topic, depending on what that is, whether it's divorce or an eating disorder or an abusive relationship, they all have kind of a central, um, intense topic, like a lot of YA contemporary. This one is about a girl named Sydney and her older brother is in, um, he's in prison for getting drunk and, uh, paralyzing a kid. He hit a kid and that kid is paralyzed. And Sydney, who has never gotten in trouble ever, is now like bearing the brunt of her parents' like control because they didn't control her older brother and let him do whatever he wanted and then he did this. So now her having been a great kid and doing everything that her parents asked her to do, she's under so much control and she feels so much suspicion when she's never done anything to earn it. And she ends up meeting the, I think there you are, the, the, Chatham family. Um, I can't remember quite like how they meet up, but they end up meeting up and she ends up spending a lot of time with Mac, who's the older brother. I think there's like three siblings and he's a pizza delivery boy. And so there's this like fun game that they play where he tells them what the order is. And she says like who the people are who ordered it. It's just a cute little flirty game. But um, his family, they are musicians. Um, and she just really enjoys how loving and warm the family is. And she's from a wealthy family, but her mom has done like everything to mitigate the gossip and the, you know, like damage that her brother has done to their like family name because of what he's done. So this is really great. I love, I love Sarah Dessin so much. She's, she's like a comfort. Then this is a newer release. I think this just maybe came out at the beginning of the year or at the end of last year, but this is The Shadows Between Us. Again, another shiny book, so I'll show real quick. This is by Trisha Levenseller. This is a standalone romantic fantasy about a girl named Alessandra. I think it's Alessandra. Yep, Alessandra. And she wants to marry the Shadow King and then kill him and take over his throne. That is her plan. Currently, her older sister is trying to win the Shadow King, but Alessandra, she is a badass chick. She goes into court with a plan and she's going to seduce the Shadow King, win him over, and then kill him. So this is definitely a Slytherin love story. I'll tell you that, you know, if you're, if you're looking for it. Alessandra, she is a Slytherin. And so we meet the Shadow King and surprise, he's actually looking for a fake fiance. So this kind of gets in her way because she's willing to, you know, 
cozy up to him however she can, but he's looking for a fake relationship. So he's willing to court her because he thinks that that will get some of his advisors off of his back, but someone is trying to kill him. And so there's a secret about the power that the Shadow King has. Obviously it has something to do with shadows. I won't tell you what it is, of course, but he needs to keep that secret very close to him because the more people who know who that secret is, the more vulnerable that he becomes, okay? He becomes very vulnerable the more people that know. So, yeah. So it's this tangled thing where he agrees to court her, but it is fake, and she needs him to real marry her so that she can be the queen and she can kill him. And, you know, it's a romance, so things are going to happen. Free and strong and brave. And that's something that Trisha Love and Seller writes really, really well. She writes really strong females. In fact, I, of course, have to talk about another series of hers, which is a duology. This is the Daughter of the Pirate King duology. So the first one is Daughter of the Pirate King, and then the second one is Daughter of the Siren Queen. And this is about a girl named Al Alosa, I think is how you say your name. Hold on, let me check. Yep, I was right. Woo, I'm proud of myself. Alosa, and she is undercover on a pirate ship at the beginning of this book because there was three pieces to this pirate map. Let's see if we got a picture of it. Nope, there's not a picture in this one. Ah, here we go. This one has it. There is this map that's in three pieces, and these three different pirates each had a piece of the map. And so her father, since she's daughter of the pirate king, had one piece of the map, and then these two other pirate groups have pieces of the map. And so her father has two of the pieces, but he needs the third piece of the map, and so she gets sent undercover to the pirate ship that owns the map. Only the way that she gets herself undercover is very interesting, and then the pirates on this ship, they are brothers, and one of the brothers is the captain and then the other brother is his like second in command and he is keeping his eyes on Alosa. He is not going to let her win over his brother because Alosa, she is half siren, which means if she uses her siren voice, she can make men do whatever she wants to. Um, and so, yeah, the men who know that, they're keeping an eye on her to make sure she can't use their powers on them. But anyway, this was a cool duet. It was a really quick read. Alosa is very strong and brave, and she's willing to take a beating to get what she wants. And I really like women like that. And I like um, Alessandra is like that as well. So Trisha Love and Seller write some great female characters. Speaking of another strong female, I'll go ahead and share this one too. Um, this book, I really enjoyed this book. This was like hard to read though because... I feel like it is a difficult book to read in this time, especially being someone who like lived alone and was has been stuck inside during COVID for such a long amount of time. And as I said at the beginning of this, it's really like worked on my mental health. I'm someone that reading books with the problems I'm going through is very cathartic. Maybe that's how it is for you too. So I wanted to bring up I Am Still Alive. And this is a book about Jess Cooper who her mother has recently died and her father lives alone in, I think it's Canada, it might be Alaska, but it might be Canada. Yeah, it's in Canada. Her father lives alone up there and she gets sent to stay with him and he's trying to teach her how to survive up there. It's just him and his dog and she doesn't wanna be there. So she resists everything that he's teaching her, but luckily for her, some of it sinks in because some bad men come and kill her dad and burn down her house and leave her and the dog alone. And we find out that her father is keeping something hidden from them and that they are probably going to be back at some point. So Jess has to find a way to survive using what is left to her and be prepared for when these men come back and be prepared to try to make a run for it when they do. So this is a good book to read in the fall or the winter. I think um, if you like survival books, if you like Hatchet, Hatchet also gets like mentioned in this book. And the blurb for it, which is what made me buy it, was actually it's Hatchet meets the Revenant infused with girl power, which is what it is. Because yeah, it's amazing. I also just love the cover of it because it has like the burning house down here and then like her 
walking away, but this book was so good. I really, really loved it. This could be a fun one to reread in the winter time, so I might do that. Okay, so this book is super interesting. This book is old. I need to look up when it came out because I found a um, library copy of it. Yeah, 2011. So this is like 10 years old. And this book is super interesting. So this book is called Forgotten and it's by Cat Patrick. Sorry, it's a library copy, so it's hard to tell. And this is about a girl named London Lane who has a very interesting problem. Instead of having, um, she has this like weird mental break, which happened because of a trauma that she lived through that I will say, but instead of like, how do we explain this? She gets a flash forward so she can like see the future, but she can't remember her past. So she has to leave herself these notes of what happened the day before so that when she wakes up the next day, she can read over what happened and then she can do it. But each day she actually gets these flashes forward and they can be super far or they can be just the next day. And so she will like write them down in her like journal or whatever. But so let's say she were to fall asleep and like not write down what happened that day. When she wakes up the next day, she would have no idea what happened. So London is I think like 17 in this book and this new boy comes to her school and he knows her and she has no memory of him. She, he isn't written down in any of her notebooks or stories or anything, but he seems to have a very like deep knowledge of her and possibly what her affliction is, so to say. So together, um, these two try to learn more about her mental block and what might have caused it as well as they're growing closer together. So this book is fascinating. It's one that I do want to reread soon um, because I remember just being so entranced by it. I'd never read anything like it before. So I, it's not quite a thriller. So I wouldn't say read this if you want a thriller, but if you want kind of like Literally, it's just a mystery about like what happened to her and then it's a romance as well because she's kind of re-falling in love with this person that she has no idea of their past, but like he knows who she is and what their past was. So, all right. So this is Of Poseidon and this is the first in the Serena Legacy, which is Of Poseidon, Of Triton, and Of Neptune. So this is a book based on like mermaid mythology except I think they're called what are they called they're called Serena is what they're called but they're basically mermaids and this girl Emma meets this guy named Galen um and he's actually a prince of the Serena and he's been sent to find someone and you know she doesn't know who he's talking about or who it is or whatever but they kind of start to fall for her and it becomes clear that Emma may have more to do with the Serena than she knew. So this one is a really cute romance. Um, the trilogy is really fun. Um, it, oh, I want to tell you more, but if you like mythology, this can be fun um, because there's like of Triton and of Neptune and of Poseidon and it was really fun. I remember loving this trilogy when it came out and waiting for it to come out. So this is a little bit of fantasy, but it's mostly told like it's a contemporary romance, but with some fantastical elements. So if you don't love a ton of fantasy, I mean, but who doesn't like mermaids? Like mermaids are great. So definitely check this out. All right. So next I want to talk about a fantasy duology that I just love. It is very intense. It is exciting. And I just wish that this duology had got more love than it did. Um, and that is the, I think that it's called the Steel and, I mean, we'll check what the series name is called. I think it's called like Fire and Steel or something. Or, I'm not sure. But um, Onyx and Ivory is the first one and then Flame and Steel is the second one. Um, and this is about Kate who, she's called Traitor Kate because her father tried to, or killed the king or tried to kill the king or helped kill the king. And so her family's in disgrace now. And so she helps with, it's called like the relay. Yep, I'm good. I remember before I even read it. It's called the relay. And so she rides the horses. 
she can actually, she has magic where she can like connect with the horses. And there are these evil beings that are like dragon-like and they're called drakes. And at night they will just go and like kill anyone who's out. So being a relay rider is really dangerous because if you don't make it back before dark, you're basically dead. And then she saves the life of, I think she saves the life of Corwin, one of the princes. Yes. Um, who she and Corwin have a history. They used to know each other when her father worked at the palace before he tried to kill her father. And she just had to, you know, run away and like disappear. And now she's being brought under scrutiny again because she just saved the prince's life. And people are like, did you do this for like nefarious reasons? Are you trying to like get back in their good graces? Like, why would you save the prince? And so it brings up all these old feelings that they have together. And she just doesn't want anything to do with that because it just broke her heart that he didn't believe her that she, you know, they couldn't stay together after what her father did as well as she has magic. So it's very important that she hides that from Corwin because if he found out, would he turn her in? And then there's a whole other drama going because in this kingdom, the way that the next leader is picked is there is this fight between the sons of the king. So Corwin actually has a brother and even though his brother is older, birth order doesn't matter. And this sign will appear and it'll be an animal that is half black and half black and half white, which is why it's called onyx and ivory. It could be a deer, it could be a horse, it could be a lynx that is split. And that means that the challenges are about to start. So not only is Corwin dealing with all this drama of Kate being back in his life and he really regrets how everything went down with her. He is also, you know, going into this cha this championship to see who will be king. And so this isn't a fight to the death. Like one of the brothers, they can't bow out, but they could choose to like lose. And he's kind of always planned to do that because he doesn't want the responsibility of being a king. And he would be okay if his brother did it. Um, but there is some information and some secrets that come out where he's like, well, maybe I shouldn't just hand this over to him. Maybe I need to fight for it a little more than I thought. So I love this duology. The second one just ripped my heart out and it was fascinating. Like it was amazing. So definitely check out this duology. I really want Mindy Arnett to write more. And I was like, I was happy it was a duology because she made them big enough like they're both pretty chunky that I don't think it had to be three, but I just wanted, I just wanted more. So it's great. And I got to talk about Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. I read this last summer. This book as well might be hard to read during the pandemic, even though it's not about a pandemic. It is a um, speculative science fiction, which I think most science fiction is. Maybe that wasn't the way to say it, but it doesn't involve like aliens or zombies or anything like that but it it speculates that what would happen if like california lost water the pipes dried up if the aqueduct ran out if they didn't have water what would happen so this whole book only takes place over i think like 10 days but it's just it starts off really subtle and we get to see all these different people i listened to the audio for this the audiobook was fascinating there is a lot of different narrators for it and it was amazing but it is about these like main couple kids there's like there's Alyssa and there's who else is there and Jackie and Kelton, her next door neighbor, and some people are prepared for an apocalypse. This isn't an apocalypse, but it very quickly feels like it turns into one and just how quickly people turn on each other and what it means when like, just, oh, it's almost just like watching a mini apocalypse set in like a short amount of time and how quickly people devolve and go bananas. And so I thought it was, fascinating um I didn't know what to think of it but I really really love them and these teenagers just like trying to survive like oh my gosh it it was amazing I really really liked it and it leaves you 
feeling very interesting about it all. It was amazing. And then the last book I'm going to talk about because I refuse to talk about YA books I love without it. And that is The Illuminate Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This book I've loved pretty much since the beginning of my booktube career. I highly recommend you read these books. I highly recommend you do a double reading experience. Get the audiobook, whether you have to buy it from Audible or whether you get it from your library and get yourself a copy of the book because this book is told in a non-traditional fashion. It has files. It has, um, it has um, transcripts from video footage. It has shipping logs. It has death counts. This is the story of Katie and Ezra who their planet gets attacked and their whole group has to flee to the stars and so they're in this small fleet together with a homicidal AI named Aiden who is trying to keep them alive. He's following to trying to follow his derivative his directions and keep everyone alive and Katie and Ezra Katie is a hacker Ezra is a soldier and they just had a very bad breakup the day that this all happens and so they end up on separate ships and they end up communicating through emails and things and then there is something going on there is a disease that gets released onto the ship that is zombie like and there is a corporation who is trying to take them all over and wants to do, make sure none of these people make it back to the greater solar system um, they're on a planet that is technically like an illegal um, mining planet so they're not on the regular radar and so they are trying to make it to a jump gate where they will be able to jump back to greater civilization and share what they found and this evil corporation does not want to let them get there so they have to go through some crazy stuff to get there. This entire trilogy is powerful and amazing. And again, the best reading experience I can suggest because honestly, if you try to just read this book straight through, which is, you can, it was made to be that way, but it's hard to do. And the first time, the first two times I ever tried to read this book, I couldn't get into it because I didn't understand how to read it or what stuff was important to read and what wasn't. But if you listen to the Audible, which is a full cast, there is sound effects, there is, like I said, there's like music, there's creepy voices. It is a full experience. It's fantastic. If you listen to it and read it, you will just be so engrossed. I promise it's better than any television show you've watched recently. So I highly suggest the Illuminating Files to you. They're amazing. So there you go. Here is some lighter YA reads for you. Okay, they're not all lighter, but a little lighter than some of the darker romances I normally suggest. Don't worry, I haven't stopped recommending romances. In fact, the next video going up is going to be romance recommendation. I'm just trying to shake my head loose a little bit and, you know, not be so intense about some of the things. Um, obviously, I still love them. I still have Taboo Book Club. We'll still be doing it, but I just need a little bit of lighter things lately. So, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Thank you so much for watching. I put up new videos three to four times a week and you can watch more of them right now. Bye!